do 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 Put that on there that I'm going to kind of zoom in and I'm not sure how it's going to turn out but I'm going to try to give you guys a better uh, view of the mixer I use and I'm just going to try to breeze through uh, what each little knob and stuff does to give you guys a better understanding. Uh, one of the questions uh, comes from Dream Bless and he wanted to know what is the best thing to do as far as EQ whether to EQ the instrument or the voice or what have you, or should you EQ the entire mix? Well, you're kind of going to do both. Um, what you want to do as far as EQ is um, less is more, and just keep that in mind when, you, when I'm explaining this. Um, you want to listen to each input, so if you have uh, we'll just use singers, for example, because that's kind of the easiest to describe as far as EQ. Um, if you have four singers, each one, you know, if you have male and female singers, or whatever, um, each person is going to be singing in different frequencies. Some people have high voices, some people have low voices, you know, and so on. Um, and depending on their voice and what's coming through the system, you know, maybe, you know, it, they're a little too high, a little too low, whatever. You want to make each channel sound good, pleasant to the ear. Um, you want to get rid of uh, bad frequencies. Um, you know, if something's too tinny, you get rid of some highs, maybe get rid of some lows. Um, I'm sorry, mids. Um, if something's too boomy or muffled, you want to get rid of, uh, some low frequencies, or somewhere in maybe the lower mids or whatever. Um, so you want to make each channel sound good. Then, once you have everything, you know, sounding good on each channel, then you want to listen to the whole mix. And you may have to make some other EQ adjustments on the whole mix. Now, you're especially going to be using EQ on the monitors because... If there's a certain frequency in the room, um, if it's a harsh kind of frequency, it may be over-exaggerated through the speakers and you're going to get feedback. Well, what you want to do is you want to find the frequency that is giving you problems and get rid of it um, so that you get less feedback. Um, if you need more, okay, that was for Dream Bless. If you need more clarification on that, let me know and I'll, I'll uh, try to help you out. Um, Okay, this is da, 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 da. Um, hooking up uh, the monitors. Um, he wants to, okay, so he wants to, this person, uh, who is this? This is Ronnie Voltry. Um, basically, what he wants to do is he has, you know, the monitor set up on the stage um, or on the floor or whatever. And um, he also wants the... Um, Uh, oh yeah, he's doing karaoke. Okay, so he also wants the music to come through uh, the monitor. So not only are the voices coming through the monitors, but he also wants the music to come through. Okay, that's not too bad. That's kind of easy. Uh, what you want to do is when you take, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use this mixture for instance. Uh, this is the one I'm giving away. So subscribe and leave me a voice. Uh, leave me a voicemail. Leave me a video response um, to the other video, and this could be yours. So let's just say you have on channel two is your singer. Well, what you can do is you can actually put the music through on another channel. And what you're going to do is the same way you add the voice to the monitor mix. On um, this particular one, it is the green knobs. Okay, so say this one is your, um, this is your vocal. You want to put the vocals in through your aux, 
and then you're actually going to take the music that you're going through and you're going to add that to the aux. So now both of those channels are going through the same auxiliary output that goes to your monitors. So I hope that helps. Them. All right, next we have... All right, that's pretty much the same question. Okay, he wants to get the music coming through the monitors as well. Oh, subgroups, that's a good one. All right, now on my, on my mixer, and I'll do a closer up view, but um, we'll just use this as, these are your subgroups. Okay, now what I do, and I'll show you, again, I'll show you on my mixer, but you have subgroup one and two, three and four. Well, if you're running mono, which means you're only gonna, which this is a kind of a mono amp because it has the main out and then the subgroups out. But um, what you wanna do is I have mine on, the drums are first. So channel one is kick, channel two is snare, uh, left overhead, right overhead, okay? Now I wanna send those to, while well, mine is group uh, three and four. So if I need to make adjustments to the drum set, all I got to do is move these. Now, if you're running mono, like I was saying, you can do, you can have four separate subgroups. So you could say, these are all your vocals. Um, this one is your back vocals. This one is, say, your keyboard player and rhythm guitars. And you have your drums. So if you run mono, you can have four separate subgroups. I personally just use the two. Um, this is for everything and this would be for the drums. So, I mean, this is kind of, I'm just showing you, you know, basic idea of what to do. Um, when I show you a closer look at my mixer, that'll make a lot more sense. Okay. All right, next we have, um, oh, okay, so what's, uh, this person, uh, KJ Eboys, wants to know what the correct connection sequence is. Now he has a mixer, amp compressor, BBE maximizer, EQ, and effects processor. He wants to know what the correct um, sequence of events are. So it's going to start with your mixer. Always going to start with your mixer, and it's always going to end with your amp to the speakers, of course. Um, so now the choices we have are mixer, amp compressor, BBE maximizer, EQ, and FX processor. Well, we want to start with the mixer, like I said. Then depending on what you're doing. I mean, you can run an EQ on the entire mix, you can run effects on the entire mix, and you can run compression on the entire mix. But this is kind of how I do it. So on, uh, I use a compressor on my snare drum and kick drum. So, you know, it's for a gate, so it opens and closes, so there's less um, stage volume, I guess. Like, you know, there's uh, less stage uh, volume is going into those particular microphones. So the only time uh, you'll hear the snare or the bass drum is when you're, when you're, you know, hitting it, obviously, and there's going to be less stage noise going into those microphones. So uh, then as far as EQ, that's going to be, like I said, on each individual channel, you're going to make some adjustments, or maybe you won't. Um, and you're going to make some adjustments on your monitors and you're going to make some adjustments on the entire mix. So those, there's really no sequence, correct sequence, as far as uh, the uh, EQ and, and the effects or compressor, because everything's going to be running on separate channels. So there's really no sequence. But with the BB maximizer, that's going to go right before your amp. And what the maximizer does is it takes your high frequencies, mid frequencies, and low frequencies, and when it goes through everything, they're all kind of jumbled up. Like you got some high, mid, low, low, mid, high, mid, low, high, you know, so it's like they're all over the place. And what the maximizer does is it actually kind of puts them in the right sequence. So then when they get to your, your speakers, uh, your speakers have less stuff to do with it to try and sort out where, because, you know, all your highs are going to go to your, your tweeter, your mids are going to go to the woofer, and the lows are going to go to your subwoofer. Or if you're just running stereo, then you're going to have lows and mids through your woofer, and you're going to have highs and maybe some of the high mids through your tweeter. So what it does is, is everything goes through into your BBE maximizer, and uh, it takes it and puts it all in the right order so that 
it goes through and your speakers have less to do. Then from your VBA maximizer, it goes to your amp and so on. Okay. Next one. Okay, again with the generalized stuff and uh, this person, I'm not going to mention their name because it was a negative comment, but um, he doesn't think that he or she, no, I think it's a he, I don't know, uh, doesn't think that my videos are basic or intro uh, introductions to, but really they are. If if you know what's out there as far as digital products and all the different things that you can do, my stuff is very, very basic. Um, Maybe I didn't explain it in a way that was easy to understand, and then that's that is my problem, and I'll take responsibility for that. Uh, but I mean, uh, he kind of unloaded on me about some stuff, so but I'm, I'm gonna work on that. I got the shop lights, I'm gonna try to do something else with this. Um, do, 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 do. oh, uh, this person, uh, this is mistakes I've made, uh, too. This person has all their amps. This is David P123X. And he wants to know how to run all of his cables from front of house to the stage where the speakers are. Well, if it's a small venue, you can keep your amps where they are in the front of the house with you if you want. If it's a small little club, it, it doesn't matter. You're just going to be running. He wants to know how to run speak on cables from his uh, amplifiers to uh, the stage where the speakers are. Well, like I said, if it's a small bar, small venue you can get away with leaving your amps and everything uh, at the front of house with you. However, if you have, say, maybe 30, 40 feet, well, then you want to keep your amps on the stage where your speakers are. Um, so you can run, so you're basically you're going to need a stage snake, and if you, uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, look at one of my other videos, I think it's uh, basic intro mixer uh, 6.1 stage snake. You know, just take a look at that and I went through the whole scenario with the stage snake. Because basically what you want to do is all your inputs are on the stage. All your microphones, your instruments, everything is on the stage. So you want to send those signals back, back all the way to the mixer where you are. And then you have your amps on the stage, so it's really easy to, to take your speak on cables or your quarter inch cables or whatever uh, cables you're using from your amp to your speakers. It's really easy. You just connect them all. Um, if you want to keep your uh, your amps with you at the front of house where you are with your mixer, then yes, you're going to have to run speak on cables from your amps all the way to the stage. But like I said, use that only for like a small venue a very small you know bar or something because there's not a lot of room on the stage you know and if you have your speakers there you know maybe it would be less mess and, and everything and, and you can control it i mean if you're if your amps and, and some of your stuff is on the stage and you're you know against the back wall where your mixture is well then you got people tripping over cords and stuff so try to try to keep your amps on the stage but if you're in a small venue you know what maybe it is better if you keep it you know with you in the front of the house um okay what's next here um oh and speaking of which i have this little i'm gonna find this diagram here um someone asked me about this and i hope you guys can see this um this is how to daisy chain um your amplifiers so someone asked me and i couldn't find the comment i don't know where it went um but somebody asked me, you know, if you need to set up, say, you know, like stacks of speakers on each side of the stage or whatever, how do you, because you only have two outputs, a left and a right, you know, how do you, you know, hook up multiple amplifiers uh, and speakers without going from one speaker to the next to the next to the next? Yeah, I'd be careful with that because every time you hook up another speaker, well, then you're either adding ohms or you're taking away ohms and, you know, you're, it, it's a weird formula to do that so what i like to do is i like to keep two speakers or four at the most on each amplifier um so what you want to do is like it says here and i'm hoping this shows up on on the camera but um you're gonna go from one amp uh so from your mixer uh goes into your inputs then oh, i'm sorry your inputs over here 
then from the same input, so you go uh, out, of, out of your mixer into the XLR inputs of your uh, amplifier. Then you take the uh, quarter inch input and you can actually put that into the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going from the bottom. Okay, so make sure to this amp, then use the quarter inch out of this amp into this amp. So now you have speakers coming out of this, you have two coming out of here, two coming out of here. So you can have the same stereo mix, um, you can have a mono mix, it doesn't matter, but this is how you uh, daisy chain uh, the mixer, or uh, I'm sorry, the amplifier. Somebody asked me, and, and I can't, I couldn't find the comment, so I'm, I'm sorry I can't give you credit for the question, but, um, but yeah, so I'm hoping this helps. Is there any more? Uh, oh, somebody asked me about the uh, microphone I use, the Beta 87, and they wanted to know if there were any interference problems. Um, I haven't had any problems at all. If you go onto the Shure website, there's um, a little chart where you can actually put in your zip code or the zip code where you're going to be uh, performing or, or running sound and it'll actually tell you what channels to use and which ones not to use because the FCC you know is, is, is really cracking down on these frequencies and I mean I I had to basically give away and throw out um, wireless microphones because I couldn't use them anymore because the government took all the frequencies from us. So whatever. Uh, okay. So, Oh, somebody wanted to know what's a good mixer. Uh, what would I suggest for a small band? Well, you got to figure out how many channels you need. Um, if it's a small club, you might not need to, to, uh, to microphone, uh, to put microphones on the drum set. Maybe you just need it for vocals. So, you know, get a little four channel mixer, you know, or you can get like an all in one where it's like a, it's a powered mixer. Uh, and you give you four or five channels or six channels or whatever. And, um, you know, it's already amplified. So you just hook it up to the speakers. You're good. Um, if you need to microphone the, if you need to mic the drum set, um, I usually do four mics for that one for the kick, one for the snare, right overhead, left overhead. Um, or vice versa, and uh, I, you, you know, have one for vocals, maybe you have a couple more for back vocals, um, you know, you can mic the guitar cabinet, you can mic the bass cabinet, you can run uh, direct out of your bass cabinet into, you know, a, a direct box or whatever, um, so I would recommend at least, you know, maybe, you know, an eight channel mixer, like the one I'm giving away, this one would work fine for a small uh, band or whatever. Subscribe and leave me a video response. Ugh. And that could be yours. Okay. And going through, going through. Uh, oh, this person wants, this is uh, Woon Boot JE1. Wanted to know, um, he has an SM58, a uh, beta, I'm sorry. And he wanted to know if that was good for a female singer. Well, it's good for every singer, but um, females that have a higher frequency in their voice, the beta version of the Shure 58 is going to pick up more of the frequency. So that's that. Um, but it's still an all around. It's a great mic. Uh, okay. This is. Uh, okay. And this is okay. I need help. I'm starting a mobile DJ part time, and I need to know need to know what to start off with. Uh, mixer. What is the mixer for? Okay. This is from Mr. Korean Thirty. Uh, what's the mixer for, and how do I connect all the equipment? Well, watch some of my earlier videos, and I go through the whole process. Um, so. Thank you guys for your uh, questions and comments, and I am working on the whole lighting situation. Um, so I'm going to try to give you a closer up, uh, you know, look at the mixer I have and how it's set up. I'm hoping that it'll help. And um, I, again, I apologize if, if I made things confusing. And because uh, sometimes when I do these videos, I'm thinking one way and it comes out kind of wrong and after I look at it I'm like hey well I could have said this differently and 
you know, so people give me crap for it, but that's fine. I'm still learning. Everyone's still learning. Even guys that have been doing sound for the Rolling Stones, I'm sure they're still learning, too. So, all right, well, um, that's it. So I'm going to give you guys a closer look at my mixer and how I have things hooked up, and uh, here we go.